Hello everyone and welcome again to my YouTube channel. Um, as you know, my name is Carlos Pedret and today I want to speak about a quite controversial topic that is uh, if imaging tests are useful in the control and the evolution of the return to play uh, decision-making process in muscle injuries, especially obviously in professional athletes. Um, why I'm saying that this is a controversial topic? It's because um, if we look uh, into the bibliography right now, uh, what we can find is that there are uh, some researchers and some institutions that uh, seems not to trust in uh, imaging in the return to play process and in the prognosis of muscle injuries. And there are others that say that they can have a uh, an important role in that return to play decision making process. So, um, if we look in PubMed and we make uh, research about uh, MRI and return to play, we have 15 results from 2011 until now. And if we look at MRI and return to play and muscle, uh, we, fi we find um, 46 results from 1996 until now. Um, these are not so much articles uh, according to that topic. Um, and, and the most useful I can find to illustrate that kind of, of topic, uh, we can divide and we can categorize it into, into different uh, lists. The ones who said that it has it is no useful at all, and the ones that say um, that these can have a role in the return to play decision making process. So if we make a list, we can find a lot of articles that say that the MRI is not useful in the uh, in the return to play decision making process. It is curious that um, most of them are published uh, by the same people in the same uh, journal and coming from the same institutions. Uh, it's just something about to, to think about, and there are another. Uh, group that say that MRI or ultrasound have a role in this return to play decision making process. So uh, it's interesting because if we make another search according uh, clinical findings and return to play bibliography, there are very, very, very few articles that uh, explain something about return to play and clinical findings. And the most important thing in that articles are that they are not uh, they, they are not um, significant. So uh, clinical findings normally are not significantly related to uh, the prognosis of a muscle injury. So it is important to know that um, obviously the return to play decision making process is not uh, uh, just with a one. Uh, factor to take into account in the terms of the decision. It is very important to know that this is a very, very multi-variable uh, process and we have to take into account a lot of things to know exactly the prognosis of the muscle injury. Um, I just want, uh, I am not going to enter in that um, in all of that articles. Uh, everyone can read it, everyone can decide if they are uh, with a good methodology, if they are saying this exactly the same in all of the papers, that's up to you to decide and to read it. Uh, I just want to show you some examples about how important could be, in my opinion, that's my opinion, my own opinion, uh, how important could be uh, imaging in the return to play decision making process. We found first, we can see that semimembranosus tendon injury here, you can see very mild. It's uh, the 20th of November. Uh, we can see uh, acute edema affecting the semimembranosus proximal membrane with a very, very mild affection of the semimembranosus tendon here. We can see that the 20th of November. We continue according to clinical findings and obviously GPS data, exercise, rehabilitation, treatment, and we decide to repeat the MRI the 4th of December. And we find that image here that you can see here. 
in my opinion, if we compare, this is the same sequence. Yeah, the, the edema is uh, brighter in the first one, but there is less edema affecting the semimembranosus proximal membrane, as you can see, but it can be seen a small longitudinal split, as you can see here, affecting the semimembranosus tendon. So in my opinion, this image, it's obviously worse than the previous one. The progression of the exercises was correct, was normally, was according to patient feelings and uh, without any pain, with a very, very mild discomfort. But the image is uh, worse. Although, although that, they, they continue according to patient's tolerance. I, I could be agree on that if we, if, we can, uh, if we can control it. And they decide to make another MRI, the 15th of December that same um, year. And you can see again that there is edema again affecting the semimembranosus proximal membrane here. And it can be seen a quite clear acute longitudinal split affecting the semimembranosus tendon. And obviously for me, this is a worse image than the second one and obviously the first one. The patient was completely out of pain, out of discomfort, and um, um, we decide uh, that they, they can play. They can play a match. Um, and what happened was exactly that. It is a complete rupture of the semimembranosus tendon with retraction and myotendinous rupture. And obviously, this is a very worse imaging than previous and the return to playtime is much longer. So what I mean, I mean that not only basing all in the imaging, obviously, but if we, if we can see that evolution, maybe it, it means that what we are applying, the load we are applying or the exercises we are applying to that return to play, maybe I a little bit higher because the tissue is suffering. So just to take into account, another example, you can see here that injury in the conjoined tendon of the rectus femoris, here in the axial plane, in the coronal plane, 15th of March, 10, April, I think that here is a bigger gap in that region here. Patient again, the player again was completely out of pain, but he wasn't kicking, he wasn't sprinting hard, but he was completely out of pain and just working hard in the gym and in the field, but without sprinting at 100%. And finally, the first of May, we can have a complete split of the conjoined tendon when the player start kicking. The same as before, and I put just two examples, but uh, I can put a lot of them. So um, maybe, and I just say maybe because I understand that imaging and clinical diagnosis is just a very, very, very small part of the whole what we need to take into account in the return to play decision-making process. But maybe if we can trust and we can um, make a, take into consideration what the MRI or the ultrasound show us during this return to play process, it could be a better way to move or to vary the load what we are trying to apply to that patient. Um, it's not the, the, the information itself, it could be never the problem. So if I can have an MRI every two weeks, that's great for me. I have more information about that patient and that injury and how the tissue is tolerating that return to play process. The information is never the problem. The problem is if you, do not, uh, if you don't know exactly what to do with all the information you have. So for me, clinical imaging, MRI, ultrasound are very, very useful 
although being a small part of all the process, but are really useful in the return to play decision making process and during the evolution of the treatment of every muscle injury. So, just to finish, um, for me, as I said lots of time, the best prognosis factor in a muscle injury is to know the exact location of that muscle injury and the structures that are affected inside it and as soon as possible. And this we can do it only, almost only, with the MRI. The only exploration that can give us is imaging, especially MRI, as I said. And the more connective tissue affected, the worse prognosis. We know that. Ultrasound, a very useful tool in terms of diagnosis in some injuries and in the injury control. But we need to know when it's really useful, the ultrasound. Another thing important for me, MSK, a specialized radiologist, should start knowing about clinical issues. If they understand what is happening to that patient, they will, um, they will make better reports and they will understand better all the, all the issues and the whole picture that we are looking at. For the follow-up, in our opinion, and most of clinicians, uh, we need to. Uh, I have to remember that I'm a pure clinician. Yes, I make research. Yes, I publish some articles. But I visit players all day, so I am a pure clinician almost. And for me, imaging tests are also really useful. Obviously, don't have to say it again. Together with clinical and field tests, GPS data, psychological training, mental skills, all the picture you saw before. And please, to everyone, there is a huge amount of uh, medical bibliography, especially in sports medicine. And we need all of us to have a critical scientific lecture not everything published is correct and we all know that so please have a critical scientific lecture and that's it for the video today um i hope you enjoy it i hope it could be useful for you and uh if you like it if you find useful please um subscribe to the channel uh make a like, uh, give some commentary or anything you, anything you want. Um, see you soon in maybe 15 days for, from now on. Thank you very much.